Compared to analyzing fMRI data, analyzing structural data is relatively quick and easy. The defaults work fine for most purposes, and the main preprocessing step is segmentation. For now, we will focus on a cross-sectional comparison between Alzheimer's patients and control subjects. If you don't already have CAT12 open, type SPM fMRI from the MATLAB command line. Once it loads, select the CAT12 toolbox from the toolbox drop-down menu and click on the segment button in the CAT12 GUI. This will open a new batch editor window. As you recall from the SPM12 tutorials, an X indicates the fields that need to be filled in before the module can be run. Double-click on the Volumes field and navigate to the CAT12 tutorial directory on your desktop. Go to the AD directory and select each subject's anatomical image, going in the order that the subjects are listed in the GUI window. Now we could do this for each subject, but there's a quicker way to do it using the filter field. Go back to the directory containing both the AD and CN folders, and then in the filter field, type NII. Click the REC or recursive button over here, which will recursively locate all files that end in .nii. Then click the Done button. We will leave the rest of the options as the defaults. You can take a quick look through them to see what they do, but for our purposes, we're going to leave them as they are. For now, take a look at the field split job into separate processes. The default value is four, which means that four processors, if available, will be used to analyze the data. Now click the green Go button and observe what happens. Note that there will be four instances of MATLAB that start running and start analyzing the data. Three subjects have been assigned to each processor, and the subjects currently in each processor's queue are being analyzed simultaneously. This is a preview of what we will be doing on a much larger scale when we analyze more subjects using the supercomputing cluster. You may also note that each processor's log file is also open in the MATLAB editing window. Click between the different log files to see how they update as the data is analyzed. This will take a couple of hours and we will come back to it when it has finished. When all of the jobs have finished, you will see the completed jobs listed in the MATLAB terminal, along with the time it took to complete the job and an IQR value representing the quality of the anatomical scan. In my experience, most jobs take around 30 to 45 minutes on a typical iMac computer, and the IQR from most open access databases is around the 75% to 85% range, representing average to above average quality. If you then inspect the output files in each subject's MRI directory, you will see five files with the prefixes MWP1, which is gray matter segmentation, MWP2, which is white matter, P, segmented anatomical image with the skull and face removed, WM, the segmented anatomical scan warped to MNI space, and Y, the inverse deformation field used to identify and correct for field inhomogeneities. From the SPM12 GUI, click on Check Reg, and then select all of the images in the folder for one of the subjects in their MRI subfolder. This will allow you to view them side by side. To quickly check whether the normalization was successful for all the images, from the CAT12 GUI, we're going to click on the Data Quality drop-down menu and select Single Slice Display. This will open a new batch editor window from which you can select all of the images starting with MWP1 or the gray matter segmentation images. In the filter field, enter the string MWP1 and then click the Rec button. It's difficult to see in the following figure, but it's the one next to the Add button. Click Done, and then notice you can choose any slice you want and any orientation you want. The defaults are slice 0 and axial, which will display an axial slice that crosses through the anterior commissure. Click the green Go button and observe whether any of the slices look significantly different from each other, either in orientation, segmentation, or slice number. 
If they all look roughly like they do in the following figure, you can assume that normalization has completed without any errors. Our last QA check is to examine the homogeneity of our sample. Not all of the anatomical scans will have the same volume in every voxel, but most brains should be pretty close, usually in the correlation range of R equals 0.8 to 0.9. From the CAT12 GUI, again, click on the Data Quality drop-down menu and select Check Sample Homogeneity. Click on Data, and then New Sample Data. From there, double-click on Sample Data. Similar to before, use the resulting selection window to navigate to the CAT12 tutorial directory containing your AD and CN folders, and then enter the string WMP1 and click the Rec button. Once all 12 files are selected, click Done. Then double-click on the Quality Measures field. Navigate to the CAT12 tutorial directory and click the Rec button to recursively load each subject's XML file. And then click Done. Click the green Go button, and you will see both a box plot of every anatomical image's mean correlation with every other anatomical image, and a correlation plot color-coded to show how much each anatomical scan is correlated with every other anatomical scan. In the correlation plot window, Click on any of the colored squares in the figure, which will display the same numbered slice for two different anatomical scans. Overlaid colors of green and red indicate positive and negative correlation with the sample mean anatomical image. Most of these correlations will be somewhat randomly spread throughout the brain, which is normal. You can use the slider below the brains to change the slice number you're looking at or you can change the slider above the images to change the overlay opacity of the green and red colors. You can also click on the button Check Most Deviating Data and specify the number of volumes you want to see. For example, entering a number of two will display the volumes ranked first and second in deviating from the sample mean. Note that even if there is a large amount of deviation, this doesn't necessarily mean there is something wrong with the volume. It's simply a heuristic for selecting the most deviating volumes and then deciding whether that deviation is due to natural variation or because of noise or other artifacts. The last pre-processing step is to smooth the data, which, similar to fMRI data, will average together signal and cancel out noise. Since we are focusing on volumetric data, we will use a similar smoothing kernel to those used in fMRI data. From the SPM12 GUI, click on Smooth. The CAT12 manual recommends a smoothing kernel of 6 to 8 millimeters. For this tutorial, let's keep the default values of 8 by 8 by 8. Then, double click on Images to Smooth, and as before, Navigate to the CAT12 tutorial directory, enter MWP1 in the filter field, and click Rec. Then click the Done button, and click the green Go button. This should only take a few moments. When it finishes, check the output by loading all of the smooth images using the Check Reg button. Enter the string SMWP1 in the filter field, click Rec, and then click Done. The images should now look blurred. Now that you have finished pre-processing and quality checking the data, we can build our statistical model to check for differences between the groups. We will see how to do that in the next video.